So I got a message on the video saying that I never mentioned the brands and the models, which I really didn't. And that was more important to him. So at first I'm like, oh, okay. And then I went back and listened to the darn video. And sure enough, I don't think I mentioned anything. Partly because it was an extension of that trends video where I had pretty extensively covered the rods and reels that were in the channel for the year. But for those people who don't see the trends or don't want to see the trends, this is the first video from the from the channel they see. Um, I think is probably a good idea to go back and, and do a cast of characters. So how it ended up is this. The two reels that weigh the same and are in active duty are the Daiwa BG 1500, that's this reel, on a Field and Stream Tech Spec Black Takedown Rod. The other one, my this year's favorite reel is what I call it, is the Luz TLP 3000. And it's on my last year's favorite rod, which is a Halo Starlight. Six and a half foot. This is also six and a half foot takedown. The big heavy rod and reel is a Spin Fisher 5. And it's on uh, a pen brand rod. The sort of castaway is an Abu Garcia Vendetta. And that's a Luz SG 300. And this was last year's favorite reel. And this was a rod I used in the original uh, comparison between the pen Fierce and the Shimano. This rod's been balanced. It doesn't have a purpose. It's a Shakespeare micro series. And this one has been bounced for the time being. It's a Shimano Kamara. So that is the cast of characters for the video. I will add this little segment and put it back up. Kind of a preview of retirement. Always keep this in the car. And I had to go to the medical establishment. So on the way home, I decided to go under the bridge. Not with a bottle, but with a fishing rod. I caught a couple of little trout, but I couldn't uh, get them on film. But one thing I'm noticing is a whole bunch. I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up. those guys see him crawling under the rock he was out getting some sun but I got a bunch of these smaller trout right here in this rapids and then I got one up in those rapids up there and I just wish I had my darn camera um, by the way this video is about weight and the old formula F is equal to MA means something you know when you think about weight you think about carrying the rod and reel around well but also about casting because when i'm just working with my wrist i don't have a lot of strength and the lighter the rod blank is the easier it is for me to flick that lure out to where i'm trying to fish does that make any sense so in the spirit of weight um, i'm going to go back home and just put them all on the scale and we'll see how much they weigh, one relative to the other. Now there's another factor that I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. And some of the weight might be in the handle. And having the reel and the handle weigh a little more is not as bad as having the blank weigh more because of the distance from your wrist, the weight is. But anyway, let's see if I can get another fish and see if I can get it on my cell phone. That I made a big stink about the weight of my gear. So I think what I need to do is quantify that for a second. Got this in Homosassa, Florida. Aluminum pliers. 
okay 3.0 ounces the alternative that's the Rapala I don't know what you call those things but you spend 15 bucks and get that so it's twice as heavy and then what I've been carrying around to cut line and hooks that thing's a tank huh so this is my new favorite fishing tool three ounces I did donate one. Fishing reels. Big chunk of aluminum. I like this thing. It's a saltwater oriented reel like I said before. This is a pin spin fisher. Pretty pricey reel but you can learn about it online. 14.7 ounces. Well, I hope I'm reading that right. I don't want it to be grams or some goofy number. Yep, 14.7 ounces. My favorite reel from last year, 10.1 ounces. And that's with the graphite composite body. And that's also with line on it. Remember the box weight is without line, what they advertise. My new favorite reel, 8.7 ounces. So this is definitely lighter. 8.7 versus... 10.1 okay well yeah I mean part of the whole thing is I had to carry stuff around 8.7 for the Daiwa 1500 supposedly a smaller reel but physically it's not a whole lot smaller also aluminum body Point seven. They weigh the same. Ready to go. That's a smaller reel. I like it. It's a great reel. My new favorite reel has the same feel as that SG300 did, but it's smoother and it's lighter. So it's my new favorite reel. Rods. Shimano Kumara. And again, it's a great rod. It's just I have a heck of a time getting them lined up through those little dinky micro guides and I don't like that short handle but it comes in at 3.5 ounces this was that rod I used with the pen fierce 4.4 so it's heavier and this is the rod that came with the pen spin fisher 5.7 so it's roughly twice the weight of the Kumara, but it feels it too. It feels pretty heavy. Halo, favorite rod from last year, 3.8. $200 rod, 3.5. So it's lighter, but it's not a whole lot lighter. I'm beginning to get why I like that, that Halo, huh? The takedown rod I got from Dix that's supposed to take the place of the halo at some point it's pretty heavy 4.9 so that's a pretty heavy rod and here's that micro series from Shakespeare so that's supposed to be an ultralight or a very light rod and it weighs the same as the halo so this reel might get retired I think I'm going to clean it up and put it on a rod for a backup but the Daiwa and Luz definitely put it on the back burner. So let's look at the total combination. The one that I said felt like a tree. That's one pound, 4.4 ounces. And that's the Spin Fisher as it comes as a package. And this is designed for, you know, salt water. And this, I bought it for brackish and salt water down in North Carolina because it's got a lot of features that will help it survive that kind of duty. Stainless steel internals and the way it's sealed and all that kind of stuff. My new freshwater rig 
which is my old favorite rod. Make sure I'm getting all of it on the scale. 12.6 ounces. This thing here feels so light and it casts extremely well. So this reel has bumped my last year's favorite reel because it has all the good qualities that reel had, the SG300 had, but it's lighter and smoother. Takedown rod combination. I like that rod even though it's a little bit heavier, but 13.5 ounces and it's a takedown so it goes in the back of the motorcycle quite well. That's the new preferred motorcycle rod. How about this one? Last year's favorite reel. I can't bounce it out of the channel. It's too nice. On the rod that I had my Pen Fierce on that first year. That should be a nice combination. You know it lines up pretty well. We'll see how that works. So there's the four rods. Got four now for this year. So it's kind of apropos I go back to the saw workbench. I've got a lot of saws to build and I need to get back to work on those. But with me I need to kind of focus on it. To expand on the F is equal to MA title to this video, first I want to see whether or not I can come up with a way of measuring and have numbers that actually reflect what I'm feeling. So first F is equal to MA. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. And the way I cast is I, I flick the rod kind of like you flick a paddle playing a racquetball. I use more of my wrist than anything else. I don't do one of those overarm casting type things. You know, the guy casts a rod like he's throwing a ball. I flick it more with my wrist. So the weight of the rod blank means something because in order to cast that lure, I have to accelerate that blank, which means I have to accelerate that mass. And the heavier the rod blank is, the more force it takes to accelerate it. That's the F is equal to MA connection. So what I've done is I've come up with a sort of a way of arbitrarily coming up with some numbers. And one of the anomalies I found was when I weighed all the stuff, the field and stream rod weighed more than the halo, but didn't feel any heavier when I was actually using that rod and reel combination. So I'm kind of curious to see what the weight is, you know, out, you know, a couple of feet away from the handle. So that's kind of what this is about, to see if I can actually come up with numbers. And again, this is totally arbitrary. I don't want people to start thinking this is a measurement and a standard that can be used from one rod to the other. It's just me trying to come up with some numbers to quantify what it is I'm feeling. First, my favorite rod and reel combination, a little skewed because I have a lure on it, but I'm going to rest it right there and first let me make sure that's zero. It's not. Let me zero, zero my uh, scale. Then I'm going to set the rod on there. And again, the distance is totally arbitrary. So in this particular case, at that point in the rod, the scale says there's 1.6 ounces pushing down. And that represents mass when it's rotating about this point on the handle. So it does sort of encompass the way of the reel at some level, and unfortunately my lure. But let's just see whether or not the pen is significantly heavier and the field and stream Daiwa combination is roughly the same. So, and I, this, this combination just feels featherweight to me. Love the lightweight feel it has. So I'll put it aside. Let's see what happens when I put the field and stream on roughly the same way. Making sure the back of the reel doesn't hit. And then setting the rod on the scale. I get 1.3 ounces, so it's 0.3 lighter which explains why this particular combination feels lighter because 
out the rod some distance, which I'd have to accelerate to cast it, it's actually lighter than the halo. Even though, if you go back through my measurements, the rod itself happened to be heavier. And what's happening here is the location of the weight. That's what's going on here. By pinning at this location, it's roughly where my hand would be or my wrist would be. A fair amount of the weight of the rod is sitting on that, not on the scale. And that's the point. Or what would my wrist have to accelerate? And that's this right here, plus the lure. So yeah, even though the rod blank is heavier, it feels light just like the halo because of the location of the weight. Let's see if the heavy rod is going to feel heavy. So I'm going to set the pin spin fisher right here. Make sure that, yeah, it's not touching. Let me zero the scale. 2.2 ounces. So not only is it heavier, but because of the location of the weight, it's going to feel heavier because out on the rod blank, there's more mass as represented by the higher weight. So what have we learned? <laughs> that I can come up with some goofy ass test that comes up with some numbers that sort of support the feel of what I'm feeling. Am I going to put that in the video? Now, this is the part of the county that is a little obscure unless you're from around this area. And the bridge I know quite well. I was actually on the crew that pulled the deck and welded on a new deck on this bridge. And this is south of Cincinnati, it's on the Atelic River. And what's usually pretty common around here is guys taking kayaks in where I'm going to park is where they pick themselves up and, you know. But I want to fish this water. I've been going across this bridge a long time. And I see these places that look to me like they ought to have fish. So one of the things I want to do today is right there. See that right there? I want to see if I can get out there and uh, see if there's any fish in there. I, I see there's been a path, but yeah, see down there, you can see where I'm not the only person thinking that way. Yeah, I know this is, is stable because I've put my dump truck in here a couple times. The first thing I notice is it's really nice and cool down here. It's actually hot as hell up in the farm. And the second thing is I'm a little disappointed on how how shallow it is. It's really, really shallow. I didn't expect it to be this shallow. So, I don't know what I expected, but somehow I didn't expect it to be quite this shallow. So I think we're gonna put on a spinner and toss it out there and see if we can attract some attention. Okay, I had two bites where they jumped through it out of their mouth. So I'm going to give it one more shot with this lure and then I'm going to change up with a true treble hook instead of one of my D barb. Got a little fish. I don't know if we're getting this or not. Come on, guy. Come on. Yeah, you're hardy. I ain't gonna worry about you. Little fish. Dress a little thing. Where are you? I have no idea what you are. So that's the second species of fish out of that same spot.
this bridge was built in the early 1900s by the Groton Bridge Company. And the county cleans it and tries to keep the rust off it and stuff like that. And I've been over this bridge many times in a dump truck. But looking up like this, it's like, wow. Of course, you have to understand the strength is in the suspension, not the deck. And I was on the crew that tore that deck off and put a new one on a few years back. Didn't take long. First cast, got another one of those goofy fish. Let's see what this thing is. No. Oh. Third species. Oh, you're a mini walleye. I know what you are. A mini walleye with teeth. Another little fish. Biting little thing. Probably another walleye. Here, get some air. Let's get this thing out of your face. Another smallmouth. Yes. Another smallie. I like these fish. It's a nice fish. Get it back over here.